So you've probably been programming for some time and I expect your programs are made up of lots of variables and data structures and you've got a whole host of functions and procedures that are executed on the data to perform um, various different tasks. Now this is an example of procedural programming. So let's paint that picture a little bit further. If you were, for example, trying to uh, create a racing game if you were thinking about producing a racing game in a procedural way you may well think about creating a whole host of variables for uh, the different cars so for example car one you might have a variable for the speed for the color for the shape for uh, the petrol that it uses and then you'll do exactly the same for car two and car three and before long you've got loads and loads of different variables uh, to store data about the different cars that you've got and you would then have a whole load of functions as well which will perform um, on that data. So you might have a function to um, accelerate a car, so to change the speed um, in a variable um, so that it increases or decreases. You might have a function for braking um, and so on and so forth. And the problem is with programming in this way um, is that you've got lots and lots of variables, they're being manipulated by lots of functions and the whole structure of your program can become a little bit disjointed the bigger the program grows. Now object oriented programming is nothing scary, it's nothing um, really that new that you have to learn, um, it's just a new way of thinking. So it's not a brand new language is what I'm trying to say. Okay, It's just a new way of thinking about programming. So with an object oriented approach what you would end up doing is instead of making a whole host of different variables uh, for the different cars you would create a blueprint, a template for one car. And that car that you define may well have um, an attribute, for example colour might have another attribute which might be its speed and then along with this uh, blueprint for your car you might then describe different things that it can do so we have described things that it looks like uh, we might want to describe things that it can actually do so in addition to the method uh, to attributes which describe what in this case our car is going to look like we may also have some methods so functions that it can actually perform and once we've created our blueprint what we can then do is we can make different objects from our blueprint. So we design a car and then we can make lots of different um, cars from it, lots of car objects from it. And this is just a different way of thinking about creating a program. So classes and objects, let's try and explain that in a little bit more detail. So in object oriented programming, the blueprint, so your description, your definition of your um, the objects that you're going to create is known as a class and as it says here you can think of it as being a factory for creating different objects uh, so one analogy that people use it's a little bit like a cookie cutter so you've rolled out your uh, cookie dough you get your cookie cutter and you start using this to stamp out or create different cookies so your class is like this cookie cutter like your template and the objects that you uh, then produce from your class in the example that I've just given would be your cookies. So if you think about why uh, we create a class any object in the real world there's only really three different things we'd need to describe it. The first thing would be its name, the second thing would be what it's like so for example if we were trying to describe a ball uh, we'd say that it's round, it might be green, it might be 30 centimetres high, etc. And the other thing that we might want to describe is what it can do. So can it move, can it deflate, can it spin? So any class that we create is going to have these three descriptions. It's going to have a name, it's going to have what it can do, and what it is like. Or I should say in the opposite way around, what it's like and what it does. And because of this, a class is made up of three sections, and they are a class name, its attributes, and its methods. So if we just look at the human example, if we wanted to create a program, uh, perhaps a computer game which had human characters or an order ordering system with that which had human users, um, and we wanted to make lots of different human objects from this class, our class might look something like this. It would need a name, we could call it human. We could give it some attributes, so characteristics about the human, name, age, nationality, gender, and so on. 
And then what we might want to do is also define its methods, things that it can do. It can speak, it can eat, it can tell a joke. Okay, so the next video we'll have a look at see how we can start to program in an object-orientated way in Python.